So last December, I talked about everything that I carry in my tool belt. And I mentioned that I would soon do a whole video on this thing. Some people call it a nail puller, some call it a nipper, or nipping pliers, or even end cutting pliers. Whatever you call it, it's one of the most essential hand tools in construction. So today, I'm gonna give some tips and tricks on how to best use it. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So nipping pliers are 100% a demolition tool. They have no practical applications for building things, just for tearing things apart. But I still keep them in my belt at all times because applications that require them will pop up in any phase of the construction process. The main purpose of nipping pliers is to help back out partially embedded fasteners. That's their best function. They cannot be used for backing out fully embedded fasteners because that's just not what they're designed for. I really see them as a perfect addition to the cat's paw nail puller, which excels at digging up fully submerged fasteners, but can't get them all the way out. So the cat's paw starts the nail removal and the nipping pliers finish it. They're really a very simple tool overall, but they do take a little technique to use. So here are a few pointers. To begin, you wanna press the head of the pliers firmly onto the surface that the nail is embedded in. You want them to be seated securely. Then you really wanna pinch or grip the nail with the side or edge of the jaws, not the center. This will let the fastener extend up past the cheek of the tool where it will have clearance to move. Then with a really firm grip on the nail, you just push or pull the handle in either direction. The rounded jaws will create lifting pressure, which will pry or roll the fastener out. You get a lot of leverage this way, but it'll only travel so far because our fulcrum here is small. So you wind up with the partially bent nail still embedded. At this point, you just repeat the process. Press the head of the pliers down onto the surface, grip low on the base of the nail again, and pull in the opposite direction. The nail bends and lifts out at a new angle, and your embedded fastener probably now has a zigzag in it. In some cases, you can just yank the fastener out now, but if it's really long, like a framing nail, you may have to repeat this process a couple more times, alternating directions. Eventually, with enough turns, the friction will lessen and the whole thing will come out. That's how you use nipping pliers. I do it with just one hand, changing my grip per turn, and I just let the pliers fall into place for each new pass. You get really fast at this process with practice and don't think about it too much after a while. Now, at this point, a lot of people are saying, but can't you just use a claw hammer to pry up partially embedded fasteners? I mean, that's mostly what the claw is for, right? And yeah, I use claw hammers to pull up a lot of fasteners as well. But in the field, you routinely run into situations where the hammer fails at this job. And this almost always happens because the nail head gets compromised. If fasteners are old and corroded, like many of the ones you'll find in old fences, decks, and outdoor structures, the heads will become brittle. They can deform easily with too much prying force. What you wind up with then is a nail with a narrow head. The claw has nothing to hold onto here and therefore can't back it out very well. You can sometimes chop the cleft of the claw down lower onto the shaft of the nail. It'll notch into place and you can jerk the nail out swiftly, but it takes a lot of practice and it won't work 100% of the time. Or you can also turn the hammer sideways and pry in passes, but sometimes the fastener spins and this just becomes useless. And in other applications, the nail is just embedded in something so dense, the material won't wanna let it go. You'll pry and pry, but just bend the nail or damage the head. In any of these situations, the nipping pliers are what I reach for right away. They give you so much more direct leverage and you can place that leverage farther down, which always gives you a better pry. The one caveat I'll give is that they can cause a lot of surface damage from the prying pressure. So if surface matters, consider using a prying buffer like thin plywood or even a flat knife tool. That'll prevent a lot of it. Sometimes I'll even use nipping pliers to bite skinny fasteners off at the base if they're too thin to pull. Or I'll rotate them around the shaft of a fastener until it's notched, then break the fastener off flush. That's what I'll do with screws that can't be backed out. You can't pry up screws, they have too much holding power. But if you notch them at the base a little, you can then break them flush and counterseek them slightly. So that's how you use nipping pliers. I love them and I always keep them on me. Let me know what you think of them down in the comments. I'll also link several brands and models in the description. Feel free to shop those links if you're interested in buying a pair. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.